The Seminole Booster Tour. It was a fixture of yesteryear, and it's back in full swing. Next to the managing editor of Warchant.com, Irish Rafael. My name is Tom Lang. And Ira made the trip along with our own Aslan Hajavandi to Pensacola this past week for the first Seminole Booster Tour night featuring Mike Norvell. It's part of a longer series. But Ira, it's the first of its kind in quite some time. What was it like to cover that event? And what are the particulars that uh, the spring tour entails for the next couple months? Yeah, it was a, it was a really good event. I think it was the first a good kickoff event. There, he's going to have ten appearances like this, mostly in the state of Florida. Uh, I think one in Atlanta, uh, which are you know the hot spots, basically the 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 tried and true hot spots of, of big Florida State fans. Tampa, Orlando, uh, South Florida. He's got a couple stops in South Florida, then up in Atlanta. Uh, and this one was um, you know it was unique because it's the first time he's been able to do it as head coach. When he as soon as he got the job, obviously at the end of twenty nineteen. 2020 going to the pandemic, that tour got shut down. And then the last year or so, he's gone on the road sometimes to meet with small groups, like maybe at a big donor's house. They'd you know bring a few uh, heavy hitters in, maybe maybe up to 25 or 50 people. But he hasn't really gone out and met with the masses. This was wide open to the public. You didn't even have to be a Seminole Booster member to, to come to this event if you bought a ticket. So it was a little bit more wide open, and uh, it was kind of a throwback to – Days of yesteryear, you know, Florida State's fan base for decades had these events with Bobby Bowden, uh, and a lot of coaching staffs did them in the spring. It's kind of fallen by the wayside at a lot of schools. A lot of head coaches now feel like they don't have time for all that. But Mike Norvell's bringing it back. Florida State's bringing it back, and and the first one I thought was uh, was a pretty cool event. And Ira, you've covered those going back to Bowden, I assume those those booster tours. How would you compare this and the way it felt and looked and sounded compared to Coach Bowden? And then I think Jimbo, of course, had had a booster tour as well. I think Willie did for his first year, Coach Taggart. Um, how would you compare what this one was like versus those other coaches? Yeah, I mean, Coach Bowden obviously was the, the master. Um, you know, he also would do the golf tournament. And so people would get to play golf with him during the day. Then they would go to a banquet that night, you know, usually the rubber chicken circuit. And and he, but he, you know, Coach Bowden, nobody's ever been better in a banquet hall than Bobby Bowden. So those those events were just magical. And I think they were a part of the fabric of this fan base because so many fans from Lakeland, uh, Georgia, all around the state would get to go to these events and get to get their picture taken with Bobby Bowden, uh, get to hear his stories, get to, you know, he would, you know, he's, you know, Bobby Bowden, he was just magical um, in those settings. Um, you know, Jimbo did them, but Jimbo didn't play golf with in that event. He played golf occasionally, but he didn't play golf in that event. So then they eventually they kind of scrapped it and went to like in South Florida, they would do casino nights and could, you know, Jimbo would talk and then, you know, people could do an event, but they wouldn't necessarily get the, the whole golf outing and all that. Willie Taggart comes in, didn't do the golf. They may have done a little bit of the golf at a couple of the events, but mostly it was just a banquet. Yep. And Willie was really good at them. Um, until they started playing games, then nobody wanted to come anymore. So that, uh, yeah. you know, those kind of fizzled pretty quickly. Jimbo could be good at those events in that he was good in the big overall setting. Like when he spoke to the room, he was good. Where Jimbo was not as good was like the, just the hobnobbing before and after taking pictures. Um, yeah, he was a little bit more, he would sit on his phone and text recruits as opposed to, you know, entertaining the, the masses. Mike Norvell's kind of been more of a throwback to, at least at that event, was more of a throwback to Coach Bowden. I mean, man, he took pictures. If anybody that was there wanted to get a picture taken, they could come get a picture taken with him. Um, he walked around, mingled, uh, made a point. Joe Surratt, remember Joe Surratt, the old Fuller State fullback from the panhandle? He came out, you know, somebody pointed him out to Norvell. He went over and talked to him for a little bit. I mean, just, you know, he's got that. He likes that part of of the process, and and so I think everybody that was there, and then his you know his message speaking to the mass, we put up those a lot of those videos um, this week, you know, this past week on Warchant TV and Warchant.com, so people could see those. But you know he's good in that setting, but he also has the other p part where he makes feel, makes people feel like he wants to be there. Well, that's the thing. You know, we have released quite a few of those pieces uh, as the days have gone by, little snippets for about three to four minutes a piece. And Mike Norvell can play the everyman. He can play the fiery, you know, homily delivering preacher. He can, you know, a little bit of, and the coach before a game starts. And he did a little bit of all of that uh, in that banquet hall. You saw that uh, Florida State's play-by-play -play man, Jeff Colhan, was kind of the MC of the affair as well. But Ira, we couldn't see the crowd in those videos. We couldn't feel the energy in the room. I have to imagine coming off of a 10-win season 
and coming off of, uh, you know, a pandemic in which these things weren't even possible. That's in the recent past. And now you see something like this in Pensacola. That room had to be kind of eating out of his hand, right? I would imagine that had to be the feeling. No question. I think, you know, you and I talked a little bit about it beforehand about, you know, he seemed kind of emotional a little bit. And I do think that the room had that vibe, you know, and again, Florida State fans are on top of the world. Not only did you go 10 and three, but you beat both of your rivals. You beat the crap out of one of your rivals. And so people are high right now. Mike Norvell, then what he did in the transfer portal and the fact that so many of those players are coming back, the you know, uh, you know, Jared Verse and Trey Benson, Jordan Travis and on and on and on. So there's just so much excitement. You know, Aslan and I got to talk to some fans before the event and after the event. And they're just, you know, Florida State fans are as excited right now as probably since after the 2013 season, in, in my opinion. And so you felt that there. Um, and, you know, like you said, Coach Norvell, I mean, I think he's he kind of fed off of that and was getting excited several times when he spoke to the group. He at the end of his, you know, rambling, he would say, OK, well, I probably got I probably went too far there. Like and he would kind of try to rein himself in. But I think he just was caught up in the moment, got a huge standing ovation when it started, got a huge standing ovation when it was over. And again, they capped it at 250 people. But I've heard people say that they tried to get tickets and they, it was it, they closed it off at that number. Um, so I think these events, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how it does around the country or excuse me, around the, the state and into Georgia. Uh, those events will be coming up Miami's this week. And then he's got several more, but I thought the opener in Pensacola, uh, you know, the excitement was really high. Well, yeah, they might need bigger venues if they continue to turn in 10 win seasons. And that's a great note, Ira, because this team, this 2022 team was as likable as any since the championship team in 2013. The interest is really, really high. So remember folks, hit the like button underneath this video, subscribe to war chant TV, absolutely free. Spring coverage is coming. It's upon us right now. This booster tour is basically a way of starting spring camp, and we are your home for the best FSU coverage at Warchan TV. Head over to the website for a great deal, as you see at the bottom of the screen through August 31st of this year. Ira, as to the future of these events, we know that there are nine more on the docket for Mike Norvell this spring, some of them before camp starts, some of them after camp concludes, all the way into May, I believe. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, open-ended question here. Take this wherever you'd like. What's the future of it? Uh, do you think it's something that Mike Norvell wants to have as a part of every winter slash spring? And then also, look, this was Seminole Boosters was on the background uh, with the FSU logo the other night. But now that the collective uh, has been looped in, the collectives, plural, have been looped in through Florida legislation, could this be something that expands? You know, uh, is, is that a possibility as collectives can be integrated with the university beyond just Seminole Boosters? I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on what you think the future of this is going to look like. Yeah, you know, I think for sure in the short term, I think Mike Norvell knows this is essential. You know, this is a fan base that has been through the ringer for the last, shoot, I don't, I mean, almost 10 years because even the last few years under Jimbo Fisher, there was the constant, is he going to leave for LSU? Is he going to, does he want to be here? And then he does leave. And then you have the, you know, two years, less than two years of Willie Taggart. Then the first couple of years under Norvell went poorly. So I just feel like this fan base hasn't, there's some healing I think that needs to happen and it's happening with those wins and it's happening with the way that team played last season. Um, but I think that, I think he understands. I think the boosters understand that, that there needs to be a little bit more healing. So I think that's one reason. And then the other reason is that this can be a very lucrative fundraiser. You know, again, the way coach Bowden did it back in the day, it was, it was always basically open up to the masses and, you know, you had people that would pay their 20 bucks or whatever to come. And, and that wasn't, Maybe that was paying for the cost of the event. And maybe you'd have some big hitters come in and write some big checks while they were at the event. Um, they're sprinkling in some of the the other uh, stops on this tour. You know, he's going to meet with the Bowden Society, which is people who have pledged to give a certain amount of money over a certain amount of time to kind of help um, kind of re, re kickstart uh, things in the program. They've got a new football facility that's not paid for yet that they're, they've already broken ground on. So they're going to be fundraising for that. They want to make these improvements to Doe Campbell Stadium which ultimately will pay for itself, they say, because of the higher prices for suites and everything else. But, but you know, it's still, it's, it's, it's a big line item on their budget in future years. And then, as you said, the NIL is a piece that uh, I think may become more intertwined as time goes on. Right now, as you said, the Florida legislature just signed that, or the governor and the legislature just passed that legislation that now allows the school to be involved with the collectives. Texas A&M just announced that their collective is going to be part of the boosters 
it's it's basically a wing of the boosters now. That's probably where a lot of people are going to be going. And when that happens, yeah, it might be a little bit more intertwined. Right now, though, I think for this year, I think this event is more just a Seminole Boosters event and the NIL collectives are going to be on their own. But that could change at any time because that seems where, where the, uh, the future is going. These are always good events when there's goodwill to be had. And goodwill is generated, Ira, when there's a 10-win season uh, in the rearview mirror, the very recent rearview mirror. We'll have you covered in all phases of what Florida State is doing in the offseason. And again, that kicks off with spring practice. Monday, March the 6th is the first day of spring practice. If you've not signed up at WarChant.com or subscribe to WarChant TV, what are you waiting for? Because you're going to love the coverage that we will bring you over the next few weeks and then into spring camp. Those updates, Ira, can't wait to be out there on the practice field. For Ira Chaffel, the managing editor of WarChant.com, my name is Tom Lang. We hope you enjoyed this content. Leave a like under the video, and we'll talk to you on WarChant TV next time.